Gentlemen, what is going on today? My name is Ryan Mickler. I'm the host and the founder of the Order of Man podcast and movement. Welcome here today and welcome back. Uh, I'm excited to be with you. A lot, the last uh, couple of weeks, I've been traveling with uh, my oldest son. We've been hunting in Hawaii and we had some success with Axis deer and uh, goats on the big island of Hawaii. So we had a good trip. It's good to be back. Uh, a little tired just with my jet lag trying to get back into it, but uh, I love doing this podcast and I love trying to give you guys information and tools and resources that will help you take your life to the next level. That's what we're trying to do here is help you with conversations and, and guidance and anecdotes and stories and all sorts of resources that you can use in your life to improve your relationships with your children or your wife, your girlfriend, significant other improve your business, improve your bank account, improve your body, improve your life in general. So uh, I made a post as I got back because I've had some major life changes over the past year, uh, one of which I've, I've been open about uh, my my divorce months ago earlier this year. And you know, it's been a hard road over the past 11 months or so trying to put things back together and rebuild the puzzle and get my life back on track. And I made this post inside our exclusive brotherhood, the Iron Council, which if you don't know what the Iron Council is, it's uh, 1,200 of us all banded together working towards common goals and objectives, but also our individual goals and objectives, personal and professional desires and ambitions and things that we want to accomplish, our dreams. Uh, and we're working together through systems and tools that we have available and we're holding each other accountable. That accountability and camaraderie with other men who are on the same path has been instrumental, not only in my life, but at this point, tens of thousands of, of men who have, who have joined us and, and who are currently with us. I made this post and I want to read it to you and then we'll break it down a little bit. I wrote this, life can get better, gentlemen, but it's not going to get better if you keep engaging in the same behaviors that got you to the place of dissatisfaction you may be now. I've had several people ask me lately how I got over everything I divorced so quickly. First, I didn't get over anything quickly. My failed marriage is something I think about every day. That said, I don't allow it to consume me and continually drag me into a pit of despair. For the last 11 months, I've changed so much about my life. I stopped eating like garbage. I started lifting weights regularly again. I put down the alcohol. I journal nearly every day. I started reading books again. I re-engaged in old hobbies. I connected with long lost friends. And I started once again to live religiously through the battle planning system that we've created. This isn't rocket science, guys. It is a lot like math. Life is a formula. And outside of unforeseen and unexpected events, much of our lives can be very predictable. The formula is simple. Eat right, move your body, self-reflect, connect with a purpose, serve other people, make yourself capable, be smart with your money, find joy, work hard, rest, and recover. If we habitually find ourselves in positions we don't like, look at the formula. Where is the breakdown? Pick one to focus on. Go all in on shoring that area up. When you have it locked in, pick another, then another, then another. Don't overcomplicate it. Do five to seven things right today. That's it. Five to seven things. Don't worry about the outcome. That will take care of itself. Like any formula, the answer is the answer. The input is what matters. Replace faulty input with better data, and the answer inevitably improves. Guys, this is how you improve your life. It isn't rocket science. It isn't hard to figure out. It isn't complicated. It's actually very simple. And that doesn't mean it's easy. That's not to dismiss what any of you may be going through. Uh, that's not to dismiss the mental, emotional, physical, spiritual torment that you might be experiencing right now. I certainly had that at, at times in my life. It's not to be dismissive of that. It's to give you hope and optimism that whatever you're facing right now, whether it's a divorce, a separation, a lawsuit, financial issues, medical complications and troubles, that you can work through it and that you can have a sense of hope and optimism for what life can be. Let's break down each one of these points that I made with regards to the formula. And, and I'll be fairly quick because we have hit these at length, but I, I, again, I just want to reiterate how important these things are. And what I noticed as I wrote these things down is they're simple and it isn't new information. So we tend to 
believe that because it's not new or complicated or complex, that it couldn't be the answer. We're looking for the complicated. Um, one person that comes to mind is Andrew Huberman. I love what the guy has to share. It's, it's fascinating information. Some of it is very applicable and some of it is just so complex and complicated and the rate of return for the effort required just doesn't compute to me anyways. I think we can hit on those things, those other offshoots and tangents and more in depth when we get these simple things right. But I fear that so many of us are looking for the complicated and complex at the expense of doing any work. We believe that, oh, if we're consuming information or we're listening to this smart, intelligent person that we're moving the needle. No, you're not. Because if you have all that information, but you're still eating like garbage, what good is the information? So let's break this down. The formula is simple is what I wrote. Number one, eat right. We all know what to do, right? Cut out the processed sugar. Just do that alone. Just cut out the processed sugars. If that's all you did in your diet, and I'll, I'll give you two things, cut out processed sugars and eat less. If 99% of the people listening to this podcast, myself included, did that, the, the diet thing wouldn't be an issue. Well, Brian, what else? How many, how, what, what portion of this should I eat? You can figure all that out. That's important. Again, I'm not dismissing it. But if you aren't cutting out processed sugars and you're eating too much, none of that matters. Do that. Let's not complicate it. So I'm going to challenge you this week to, if, if the eating thing is an issue of you, of yours, then focus on that. No processed sugars for the rest of the week. Smaller portion sizes. Simple things like instead of getting the big plate at home, serve yourself on a smaller plate. Y'all have them. Right? You've got the big plate, you've got the large plate, and the small plate. Use the small plate. And you'll do smaller portion sizes. Also, don't go for seconds. I like seconds. I'll, I'll eat all the seconds. No, just one helping of each, a good balanced portion, meat, vegetables, maybe starch like potatoes or rice, something like that. And that's it. You don't need anything else. No, it's not sexy. I know that might not be fun, but if you want to get it right, that's what you'll do. Don't go back for seconds. Cut out the processed sugars. And I would also say snacks. Avoid snacks. Eat at lunch, eat at breakfast, eat at dinner. That's it. Uh, number two, move your body. Guys, you all know you should be moving your body on a daily basis. And I guess some guys will say, work out three to five days a week. No, train your body every single day. I'm not saying that you need to do legs or arms or whatever it might be every single day, but I'm saying that you should be active every single day. If you're not in the gym because it's a Saturday or Sunday and that's not your schedule, then go out for a two-mile walk. And don't just put around, like go out for a brisk walk. Like Walk with intentionality. Walk with purpose. Yes, get your 10,000 steps in, but walk like you're actually doing it for a reason. Get the heart rate up a little bit. Get the pace going. Get the dog going if you're walking your dog because your dog probably needs it too. Be intentional about it. If there's things that you don't like that you've tried, maybe you've tried martial arts because you hear me or somebody else talk about it all the time. And so you're like, I'm going to go try martial arts. And you hate it. You don't like it. You don't enjoy it. You find it miserable. Then don't do martial arts. Like, I won't think less of you. It doesn't matter if I do anyways. Nobody cares. Go do the thing that's going to be your thing. I don't like running. People like running. That's weird to me. I don't want to run. I'm not going to do it. I might go run and train for an event or something like that to push me outside of my comfort zone. But yeah, you're not going to find me on a treadmill. You're not going to find me running around the neighborhood. Because if I force myself to do that, I'm going to be miserable and I don't want to be miserable. I can go lift weights. I can go train jujitsu. I can go hike. I can go ruck. I can do a lot of other things. I don't have to run just because somebody says running is the best. I don't have to go do jujitsu because somebody talks about jujitsu all the time. But you do need to be active. Find the thing that's going to work best for you. Again, it's not revelatory information, but it is valuable. Number three, this one gets overlooked a lot. Self-reflect. You, you have to have time in your day to think about your life, to think about how you're showing up, to think about how you're performing, to evaluate your own performance. Am I doing good? Am I doing bad? What areas of, a, of my life am I excelling at? Where am I falling behind? How, wh why do I feel the way that I feel? Why am I experiencing this emotion right now? Why is this thing triggering me and getting me angry? Why am I impatient? Self-reflection. Get up in your head. Not all the time. You don't want to be in your head all the time, but you do need to be in your head to some degree so that you can learn from yourself about what's going on and what makes you tick and what turns you on and what turns you off and what demotivates you instead of inspires and motivates you. Figure that stuff out. And a great way to do that, 
I don't think I wrote it here. here. Nope, I didn't write it in this one. Is journaling. Just taking 10 to 15 minutes in the morning. I do it in the morning and then I do a little bit, a little bit of documentation in the evening and that's it. What, what, what am I excited about today? What do I want to accomplish today? Uh, what lessons do I hope I learn? What struggles am I currently dealing with? How am I feeling? Am I rested? Am I tired? Am I recovered? Am I optimistic? Am I grumpy? What am I experiencing right now? At the end of the day, what did I get done? What didn't I get done? Where did I excel? Where did I fall behind? I, I, I know this is, it's not hard. I just know a lot of people aren't going to do it because it takes time. And it takes time to sit down for 15 minutes in the morning. And if we get up and we have barely enough time to shave and maybe take a shower and brush our teeth before we head out the door, you're not going to do this. You don't have the time to do it. So we got to be a little bit more intentional about maybe waking up an hour and a half earlier than we normally do. And I say an hour and a half because that gives you time to go to the gym and then it gives you another little bit of time to do some journaling and self actually. And then again, at the end of the day, if you close your day out at 6 p.m. or 5 p.m., close it out at 4.30. If you're off the clock at 5 be done at 4.30 and you can use that last 20 to 30 minutes to get get a notepad out or whatever planning tool or system you use and start writing. Hey, here's what I accomplished. Here's what I didn't. Here's what I want to improve upon. And I promise if you do that, you're going to be more aware of who you are and how you show up and why you're feeling the way you're feeling and you're going to produce better results. One quote that I really like, it's in our battle planner. I'll just pull it up so you can see it here. If you're watching on YouTube, I don't know if that'll be backwards for not, but it says that which is measured improves that which is measured improves by Carl Pearson. So if you measure it, or at least you reflect on it, inevitably going to get better next connecting with a purpose. Why are you here? This might be a spiritual undertone to this, or maybe not depends on if you're spiritual or not, but there's, there's gotta be a reason for you being here. Like you're not as a, a mindless soul as zombie, regardless if you think of of, uh, that we were created in God's image or that we all knew what we are. Like there's got to be a reason you're here. You don't have a reason for being here, for existing, for occupying space. Why are you? S some of you probably at this stage in your life are asking yourself that question. Like, why am I here and considering taking your own life? Don't do that. Please don't do that. Do these other things first and see if life gets better. But don't. How does the saying go? Don't don't create a permanent you know, solution to a temporary problem. And I'm not trying to undermine what you're going through. I don't know what you're going through. I know there's a lot of people in despair right now saying that's not the answer. The answer are these other things. And the answer is figuring out why you're here. You know, some of the most inspiring, motivating men that I know, are, and many of which I've had on the podcast, are guys that have been in that pit of despair, that darkness, and they've used their horrible and tragic and, and even horrific circumstances and situations to learn to grow from and then serve other people. And they're so deeply connected to the purpose of serving other people that it inspires them to show up in a way that maybe they wouldn't have shown up otherwise. I know that's hard to say in the moment when you're really dealing with some difficult and challenging times, but I'll tell you what, as a man who's gone through some challenging and difficult times, those are the times that give me the information and also the position, perspective to serve other people, connect to a purpose. Next, serve other people. That's purpose oriented, but serve other people, serve your children, serve your wife, serve your community members, serve your neighbors, serve your colleagues and your coworkers, employees, clients, serve other people. If you don't know what your purpose is, just start serving in every capacity you can help other people add value to their lives, donate, volunteer for nonprofit organizations, like what? help somebody at work, help the guy that's in the cubicle next to you with the thing that he's struggling with. Not with anything, any hope of anything in return, but just because it feels good to serve people and it's the right thing to do. I found that I can't wallow in my own self-pity if I'm more concerned with serving other people. But if I'm concerned with serving myself, that isn't going to, that isn't going to help. Um, be smart with your money. Talked a lot about that. Find joy, work hard, rest and recover. Guys, I'm not going to get into all these today. I've talked about these things at length. 
but I just want you to know that the formula is simple. We're going to talk, I'm going to break out each one of these, I think in future Friday field notes a little bit better. Be smart with your money, finding joy, working hard, resting and recovering. We're going to break each one of these down. But guys, what I want you to know is that you can have hope that the outcome of your life will take care of itself in a better way if you take care of the inputs and the information that you put in. Faulty data, faulty return. Quality, high caliber data, meaning high caliber activities, the better your life is going to be. And outside of a few unexpected and unforeseen life events, life is pretty predictable. So like I said in this post, take a look at what's working in your life and double down on that. Take a look at what's not working in your life and scrutinize and analyze the details, the input, the behaviors that are creating that for you and fix them, replace them with better behaviors. You do that enough, you do that over a consistent and, and sustained periods of time and you will inevitably win. Okay. Kind of a short one for you today, guys. I'm on a bit of a time crunch as I get back and get back into the thing, but I wanted to get this information to you and I want you to be able to implement it. If you want to know how to implement this stuff even better, sure, you can go at it alone. Uh, you can even talk with people in your area about these things or jump on our Facebook group at facebook.com slash group slash order of man and talk with those guys. But if you want to take the elevated experience where we're all working together, we're having conversations like this, we're talking about these things, we're identifying specific things that each of us should do, and then we're holding each other accountable to do it. Like, hey, you said you were going to go do this thing. You're not doing it. What's up? That's a true brotherhood. Not somebody who's going to make you feel good about your underperformance, but somebody who's going to call you up to perform better than you currently are. We are open right now in the Iron Council. We're open until the end of this month, June. So if you want to join us, band with us, and connect and learn more about what we're talking about here and go deep into how to do all of these things specifically for your situation, go to orderaman.com slash Iron Council. Orderaman.com slash Iron Council. Guys, I know your life can get better. I don't know where you are right now, but I know a lot of you are struggling. I get messages from you. It doesn't have to be a struggle. Life is inevitably going to happen. There's going to be moments and glimpses where we're going to struggle that can make us better, but it should not be a perpetual struggle. Life can get better. You can get better. You can improve your circumstances, but you have to change your behaviors. Part of that is what we shared here. The other part of that I would suggest to you is again, is the Iron Council joining us, banding with other men, push and drive and motivate and compel you to do the things that you say you want to do. All right, guys. We will be back next week. Until then, go out there, take action, and become the man you are meant to be.